goes on, and I, I think I'm trying to impress upon you, uh, especially for T cells, that T cells have a lot of molecules expressed on the exterior. And uh, some of the molecules have a specific structure. There, are, there is a assigned name to that, and there is a function to that. And uh, the words and numbers may seem foreign to you at this level, but as we move along, and if you built up that foundational concept in your mind that these cells are there for immune response, they have a good function to perform. And also keep in mind that they are cells of hematopoietic origin. They are being produced somewhere. They have a definitive number, and people may get cancer of that as well. So all these things will form the basis of it. And some of the aspects that I will repeat again, and as you can see the T-cell surface, it has a T-cell receptor for antigen. We've been talking about that, alpha and beta chains. It has to have a, uh, it has to have two signal. Let me put it this way. So T-cells would not take an immediate response unless you approach a T-cell via two signals. So one signal, of course, is a antigen attaching to a TCR. The other signal is a signal transduction associated with TCR. So it wants to make sure that it is reacting in a way that is good for, for, for you, for your immune response. So it is, is pretty tight. It's just like a door or a locker that you have to have two keys. You want to make sure that this is properly secured. Okay. Now, uh, I also said the core receptor CD4, CD8. They are there that makes them a CD4, CD8. They are co-stimulatory molecules, and they have a lot of functions. Some of the functions like will to uh, increase the activation, increase the proliferation. Some will be uh, hatched in this case. So once it gets activated, you want to put a stop to it. So they are positive co-stimulatory molecule, and they are negative co-stimulatory molecule just to make a balance between the functions. And then again, uh, CD40L, if you remember, we talked about that. And some of these are required for the cells to take an effect because cell has to take a signal, is a command, is a message there. For example, cell needs to start making MSC class one, is a message there. So this message has to go via a sequence of genes, a sequence of amino acids. It has to go via messenger RNA because we need to synthesize the proteins. Cell needs to know whether you want uh, to start making a cytokines or proliferating or a class switch. So anything, any work done, that needs to be initiated via a signal. So it has to be a signal. So that signal is properly secured because T cell sits at the junction. This is the main player. Right? So you can see a bunch of them. And these, this, these are the very few of them, and there are others as well. But just to give you an idea that if you, if you associate a function, that basically is an on-off switch attached to it. Then there are adhesion molecules some, some of the time. For example, you want uh, the T cell to come back and sit in the lymph node. So it has to find an adhesion molecule. So there has to be a molecule expressed on the cell and the corresponding molecule expressed on the surface. For example, if you have like CD62, which is L-selectin, if you remember selectins. So selectins are molecules expressed on T-cell, and they attach with adrescins. So adrescins are opposite to that, that are in epithelium or endothelium or wherever there. So once an activation takes place, they get expre expressed, they get expressed, and then come together and bind and interlock. So these are some of the uh, adhesion molecules, and some of the molecules may take a chemokine signal. For example, if you remember chemotaxis, so there is something secreted and that sends a signal, it wants to bring into attention of all the T cells. So that signals through a message and then brings them together. So there is an expression of chem. So re remember, it's just like um, T cells are patrolling in your body. 
but they are running everywhere. So they, know, they don't know where you got viral infection, where the problem is. Once they figure out where the problem is, then they will locate over there. So that location back to uh, where they are needed is via some mechanism which is expression of receptors like homing receptor, they want to go back. So each and everything is properly controlled and regulated. So they are very coordinated and very regulated and we do it uh, via adhesion molecules, okay? And also, I'm trying to emphasize that uh, since these are proteins, they are coming from your genes, they are coming from your, uh, you know, MHC, so all these things will tell you, number one, variable biological response, a specific biological response. So that's the whole idea. I just shared with you a concept that they want, they should be, they call it personalized, personalized medicine. That's what the term is coming up now. So everything based upon your genes, that is the future of pharmacy. That is the future is going to come. Personalized medicine, they already started it. It is available. I told you when I had uh, Dr. Petrova's class that they only started in John Hopkins and probably one more institution. They are talking about it. It's going to come. So it's good for you. If you want to stay in the market, in the business, and be competitive, you have to do a lot of reading. That's the way it is. You, you chose this profession. That's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. There would never be an end to it, unfortunately. So uh, we better get the basis for that. So remember, so this is how the body operates. Okay, so uh, we have uh, all these molecules that get expressed, like in inflammation, there's inflammation in the vessels of, that's a spleen. So that inflammation will send a signal, they'll start expressing some adhesion molecule. And when normally when the T cells would circulate, this time they will come and lock themselves to those adhesion molecules because if they weren't there before. This means that they've been asked for help. That's why they're also called helper cells, especially CD4, because they want to help you and there are different ways that are going to help you, okay? Now, uh, I cannot overemphasize uh, that uh, diversity and specificity is coming from the choice within your genes that these molecules have because they are a part of super IgG family, immunoglobulin family, Ig family, okay? And uh, again, uh, don't get confused, but just remember that as in antibody, we had heavy chains, we had light chains. In heavy chain, we have gamma, alpha, micro, delta, epsilon. In light chain, we had lambda and kappa. So they both are coming from different loci from the choice of genes that you have. So this is your germline, for example. This is your germline, and you can see when you have to pick up a gene from a V segment, J segment, we have an option there, option of 50 different genes, option of six, option of six. So you can see that uh, when it comes to formation of uh, alpha beta, for example, that alpha beta is the major component of TCR receptor, if you remember that alpha and beta. And then there are gamma delta. So gamma delta is something that I just shared with you is expressed on intraepithelial lymphocyte that are present in mucosa. So they basically are coming from those choices that you have, uh, a coding that comes from the gene. So that is a sequence that comes and you pretty much will end up a very specific TCR receptor. So the question is that your body will mount a TCR response. Let me give you another example. So if you want to be safe this year from flu vaccine, you have to have a flu shot, which is out there this year. So the old one would not help you. The old one did help you that year. It, can rate, it generated T cells and antibody responses for that year, right? So now your body has this capability to see a different antigen and mount a different response. And you'll ask me, why would we need to do that? That normally doesn't happen with bacteria because bacteria 
for all good reasons, do not mutate. They don't change. But viruses have this capability, they mutate. They will change. So you always have a challenge. Bacteria are also mutating. That's why we have uh, some of the problem in terms of antibiotic resistance. But nevertheless, it is something that is there with, uh, with uh, viruses. So what do we do? Right? So we don't want to take medicine now and then or have like medicine taken as food because there are viruses everywhere. So our, our bodies have capability in terms of generating a different type TCR variability so we can handle all those things that come our way and generate a protective immune response. Does that make sense? Kind of? Okay. Now, we agree that there is a uh, diversity. It was for BCR, it was for TCR, pretty much the same, right? VDJ and enzymes pretty much are the same. I would not go in detail in this lecture, but uh, I'll just give you a superficial information that the same enzyme are involved as the enzyme in B cell. The only thing I would just uh, thrust upon you is recombinases. So you remember, so you have a choice VDJ, and there has to be something which is going to pick up. So recombination is via enzyme. So splicing takes place. So that is a set of enzyme recombinases. And then there are specific genes that regulate that. So we call recomb recombination activation genes. So they are very famous, and there is a lot of things happening, RAG1, RAG2. And I remember, I don't know whether you remember, that when he, uh, Dr. Bradley, would have talked about pathophysiology, transcription factors, and many other things, he did mention RAG1, RAG2, because it's very common, it's very common. So keep that in mind, that that kind of recombination enzymes or activation of gene is under control. So the point of emphasis is control of expression of those enzymes needed to cause that recombination. And these are two important enzymes, RAG1 and RAG2. All right. Now let's go to the D -cell, T cell transiation. Uh, we pretty much know that uh, they call T cell because they are developed in thymus. Thymus is there. Uh, it is a large size above the heart in, in the newborns. Over time, it kind of involutes, shrinks, dries up. Uh, but sometimes, uh, especially when we say immunodeficiencies, so we're talking about the babies, we're talking about pediatrics. That's where you notice that. Because they are, uh, those, those, those who know, especially neonatology and pediatrics, uh, Babies have recurrent infection, very common, very ear infection. You know, very common, those people who have uh, kids, they would know that every month they have to take their kids to, uh, to the physician because they have recurrent infections. We want to make sure they do not have immunodeficiencies because your immune system be, should be good enough to protect you. Now, one such anomaly or disease that may happen where the thymus is not fully functional, it's not uh, developed. It is not doing what it's supposed to do. Right? So, of course, T cell will take the big brunt of it. So, all those children who are born with a failure of developing thymus will end up with the immunodeficiency called D. George syndrome. So, this is a D. George syndrome. And, uh, of course, a uh, good thing is that it's not very common, but if you want to uh, make some experiments to mimic that scenario that happens in human being, we have to use a mouse or rat model. So what happens is that in, in mice, for example, and I'll discuss that in detail when you come for lab, uh, mice, genetic mice models. So what models do we have in, because all the experiments are done when we create these cancers and immunodeficiencies in animals, unfortunately. Uh, and then see what happens to that uh, animal and then the next phase will be to carry that research to human studies and so on and so forth. So if, you, if, if a mice lacks uh, thymus, we call it nude mice. 
because mice then would lack hair. I mean, this is an obvious feature, but of course, it would not have a T cell, right? It would not have a mature T cell, so to speak, because the precursors acquire T cell full type in, especially the TCR is given to T cells in thymus, okay? So, uh, in these cases, these uh, mice and these babies would not be able to fight infection. So, no matter you give antibiotics, they're going to help because they have a problem. We need to figure out what the problem is before we cure that, okay? So uh, T cell differentiation, this means is important. So let's see a chart as we saw in B cell, what are the various steps where T cell differentiates into. And uh, just a few uh, important points when we talk of T cell differentiation. Just like B cell, remember there always is a stem cell and pre-cell, so pre-T cell and so on and so forth. The maturation process is not quick. It goes through steps because it takes time. It goes through expression of something. So they are gradually uh, going through that phase. So in the process of development, uh, ideally, they should acquire that particular alpha, beta, gamma, delta uh, epitope on top, but it's a biological system uh, and it, there can be mistakes happening, there can be something happening that we want to figure out. For example, uh, there could be double positive cell, this means it could be CD4 positive, CD8 positive as well. There could be double negative. There are many things that can happen when the developmental stage takes place. So if your T cells are non-functional, you want to do bone marrow biopsy, you want to figure out what type of T cells you have and why are they non-functional? What is wrong with them? Uh, one such thing is that uh, there is something we call thymic selection. I think I may have talked about that initially, uh, where I said the T cells are educated in thymus and they are shown all your antigens in the body and the idea being that they should not react and pick up your self antigen and mount a response to that, right? So if they do by chance develop, such T cell, they are negatively selected and taken back out of the system and they basically uh, die by apoptosis, right? And of course, that is under a autoimmune regulator, specially uh, called AIRE. So these things are important in terms of those specific diseases that we see. And then again, uh, we do want that as the cells have single positive cells because we kind of used to that system, CD4 positive and CD9, CD8 positive. So in, uh, in, in thymus, for example, so this is a thymus. So you can see a thymus and medulla of the thymus, cortex of the thymus. And then again, uh, the lymphoid precursor cell, if you look at the hemo hemopoietic cell table, you will see that all the cells basically are coming from bone marrow. So that is number one. So they are lymphoid precursor cells. They have an ability to become lymphocyte. They will end up in the thymus. At that level, they are double negative cells. They don't have any expression of uh, TCR. So thymus will put, assemble TCR on top of them. And then you can see they follow different routes. So in the first route over here, they will become a pre-T cell and then there is a beginning of the receptor formation. And that's where uh, choices are made in terms of selection of those appropriate amino acid sequence to give you whether a alpha, beta, gamma, delta chain. So these chains are proteins and there's a selection taking place at that level. And uh, to begin with, you end up with a double positive cell. So the cells that you develop are double positive, alpha, beta, CD4 positive. And then this double positive will come from cortex. They will come into medulla. And in medulla, then there is a separation. And then both of them will go their ways. So you will end up single positive cell, either CD4 positive or CD8 positive cell. Okay? And then again, they will then mature once they go into the circulation. But right now, 
they have an alpha beta chain and they are CD4 positive or CD8 positive. Now the other side is that now they have a TCR arrangement where they don't pick up an alpha beta, they pick up a gamma delta cell. So gamma delta cell basically uh, will bypass all these selections and they will straight away go and get located into uh, epithelium, so in the mucosa of the epithelium. So we basically, as I just said earlier, used to think that uh, they are CD4 positive, double positive, but I think um, majorities of, majority of immunologists think that they are CD8 positive. So there could be a little bit of discussion on that, but nevertheless, they are more of a cytotoxic nature. So if I call CD4 T cell as a helper cell, and I call uh, CD8 cell as a killer cell, just to differentiate from natural killer cell, which is called NK cell, I would call that cytotoxic. So that's another term, uh, technical term used for CD8 positive cells. And you can see that happening over here. Okay. And then again, uh, they are thymic epithelial cells. Right. Remember when I said that APC presentation, uh, I said, well, I told you three things. I didn't tell you the fourth thing because it's not that uh, thing which is very common, but you can see that uh, thymic epithelial cell also express the receptor for MSC. And that's where the thymic epithelial cell have this capability to uh, present the antigens to the T cells and see how do they respond. So they basically educate the T cells and pick up those T cells that have got a combination that matches your own body's combination because we don't want those cells to go and circulate and cause problem. But having said that, uh, exception to the rule, if they do so, which they do, you will end up with an autoimmune disease. So once we, when we, when we will talk about autoimmune disease and if they ask you what are the immunological basis of autoimmune disease, this is the immunological basis of autoimmune disease. Okay? Now, a little bit of positive and uh, negative selection that I just mentioned. And uh, you can see from here, we have uh, double positive cells. That's what the thymus is producing. And we have a receptor CD4 and CD8. And thymic epithelial cells are there they are going to present, present those epitopes on top of their MSC molecules, uh, MSC class one and class two. So uh, the idea is that uh, they want to see if they interact with that. So there are two obvious routes that this will take. One is, let's say, if there is no interaction, there's no interaction, cell will die. The other thing is, if there is an interaction, they will consider that as a positive selection because initially they want these cells to have this capability to identify and lock in with MSC molecules. If they lack that, then of course they would be of no use if you send them to the circulation. So you do want that. So the very first cells which are going to be positively selected will be those cells which have a TCR specific for self MSC or self peptide. So that is a positive selection. So what they would do is that they will make sure that all those cells that have capability to pick up you, they are positively selected. So you have to kind of uh, take them out of the general pool of the selection. Okay. And then again, uh, the second step will be when the uh, thymic epithelial cell, uh, thymic dendritic cell, because they are different than epithelial cells. Remember, epithelial cells were there that were expressing as a part of antigen presenting molecules. So they are in the epithelium of thymus and nothing else. But then again, there are thymic dendritic cells. So they then negatively will select two type of cell. Number one is that they want to find out, which you use term affinity. Affin affinity means binding. If they are cells, they rapidly bind uh, 
with a epitope even in smaller number, we we'll call them a high affinity. They're very high affinity molecules. They will just jump onto those and grab them. So we want to make sure that uh, that kind of high affinity for your own self are deleted. So they basically will be deleted from the system. The second thing will it will pick up those which will have a intermediate affinity interaction and let them survive into the system. In this case, uh, the whole idea is that uh, we want to make sure that the cells which are graduating from thymus are the cells, number one, they are functional. They either have CD4 positive or CD8 T cell. Number two, they can recognize an MHC class one and class two. And number three is that they do not react with your self antigen. So this is a whole idea. So all these kind of things takes place in thymus. If thymus is non-functional, is missing, is not developed, so there will be a problem. So you will have all these cells which may be double positive, which may have affinity. They bind to the receptors with very fast interaction and uh, they will pose problems uh, in future especially for maintaining a normal immune response. But uh, remember that there are some other cells also that are differentiated uh, in thymus and they are uh, natural killer cells and they are natural killer T cells and they are one important set of cells that uh, are called T regulatory cells, and they have a long history. Uh, we call them T Rex. These are the T Rex you see in the Chicago Museum, right? So, T Rex, they are T Rex. Uh, there was a time we used to uh, call them suppressor T cells, then it went out of fashion. But now we found out these are the main players, especially when I talk of transplantation and cancer. I'm going to talk about T regulatory cells because by the end of the day, uh, as the name suggests, they regulate immune response. So T regulatory cells in T-Rex. 